Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke and then New York Fed President Tim Geithner told Congress the assets they bought during the Bear Stearns collapse were investment grade, and that may raise new questions about the controversial Maiden Lane portfolio. Bloomberg's Caroline Salas is with us now with her exclusive reporting on the issue of transparency at the Fed. Caroline, great work here. Bottom line, did Bernanke and Geithner lie? Right, so it's really a question of omission. They went before Congress and they said the assets are investment grade. Now in a little footnote to Geithner's uh, written testimony, it says all of the cash assets as of March 14th were investment grade. And March 14th was the Friday of the weekend that Bear Stearns collapsed. And this testimony took place on April 3rd. But by the time that they were speaking, some of the cash securities had already been downgraded to junk and by the time the deal closed in June another 170 million would have already been downgraded so, to junk. J just to be clear both Geithner and Bernanke are saying at the time that they said these securities were investment grade they were right but then by the time they and in testified, their testimony they did not always clarify you know, they, they said all the assets are investment grade um, you know it wasn't an annex to, to Geithner's written remarks but if you listen to the hearing they represent the assets in this portfolio as having durable investment grade ratings when in fact they were literally deteriorating and being downgraded as they spoke and no one in the market would have treated these assets as investment grades. So we're going back to this theme of timing is everything but what about the fact that Bloomberg yourself included as part of the, the motion had to sue the Fed to get this information doesn't it make it seem like they did lie I mean if somebody has to pull information out from the Freedom of Information exactly. Act and we, it doesn't make you look that good. Exactly. And we spoke with Congressman who said that this really gets to the heart of, um, you know, the Fed's disdain for transparency. Um, you know, there were other things that they omitted from their testimony, such as this $16 billion credit default swap portfolio that has never been reported on in, until now. Uh, they didn't They didn't go before Congress and say, well, all of the cash assets were March 14th on, or sorry, were investment grade on March, March 14th and are being downgraded as we speak. And, oh, by the way, we also assumed $16 billion of credit derivatives, some of which are leaving taxpayers guaranteeing bonds that are already just against default. So let's talk about this difference of tens of billions of dollars. I mean, what kinds of figures are we talking about? I have something here, 42 million. This is taken from your work. And now we're talking about a difference of 172 million. Right. So for the 42 million number is what, literally the day that they were speaking before Congress, that amount of CDOs had already been downgraded to junk. By the time the deal closed, which was June 26, 2008, 172 million of the CDOs were already junk. So they represented this portfolio as investment grade, but by the time they actually bought the assets, there was a portion that was already junk. So a difference of tens of billions of dollars, what's a few billion between friends. What are the chances you and I, as taxpayers, are going to get paid back? Well, they're saying they are going to get, you know, we are going to get all of our money back. As of the end of the year, um, you know, the, the Fed's audited financial reports uh, put the value of the Maiden Lane loan, which was originally $28.8 billion, they put the fair value of that loan at $27 billion, so it was underwater as of year end. The Fed is insisting that taxpayers will recoup all of their money. Um, but that's almost not the point. The point is how do they represent the risks? And we do know now that Maiden Lane, the portfolio, is under audit. Some, there could be some pretty big consequences I mean, for the correct. likes of J.P. Morgan Chase, for the likes of the careers of Bernanke and Geithner. That's absolutely right. The Fed's secrecy during the crisis has spurred this legislation right now that is calling for mandatory audits of the Fed's bailouts during the crisis and would also give um, the GAO the ability to audit you know, future Fed bailouts. So that's really repercussions because they have been so secret about their actions. Caroline, great work. Thanks for coming Thank in and talking about it. Caroline Salas, Bloomberg writer, one of the ones who is working on this Maiden Lane portfolio story.